In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Our God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one divine being. In Genesis, we've heard of God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. We also heard in Genesis of the Spirit of God hovering over the waters. Where was God the Son? John, in the New Testament, in his Gospel, tells us he was in the beginning. John calls him the Word through whom all things were made. And that word became flesh for our salvation. He dwelt among us, and we have beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father. We are getting close to the time in the church year when we celebrate the birth, the incarnation of God's eternal Son in human flesh. Advent will begin our time of liturgical preparation in the church. We will hear of the promises and prophecies of the past, that promise God made from the beginning that the seed of the woman, the son of the woman, would crush the serpent's head even as his own heel was being bruised. That's a promise of Jesus, even from the beginning. Genesis chapter 3. We hear in the church of Isaiah's prophecy that the virgin would give birth and that they would call him Emmanuel, God with us. All of that is leading up to the season of our celebrating Christ's incarnation or his coming into the flesh. Incarnation is just a word that means he was made flesh. Carnivore is a word we use to describe a creature that eats flesh, meat. Incarnation means that Christ came into the flesh. The eternally begotten Son of the Father was made man. He was born of the Virgin Mary, as we confess it in the Creed. So that Joseph was not his biological father, but his foster father. The father who raised him, taught him, was married to Mary, his mother. But Joseph was not his biological dad. Christ, as we confess it in the Creed, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. We've talked about that already. A miraculous incarnation. A miraculous conception. Involving only the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mother of our Lord. So she conceived as a virgin and she bore Christ as the same. This is important for us as Lutheran Christians because the life and the death of Jesus were no ordinary life and death. It was the life the birth and the life and the work leading up to his death of the very Son of God made flesh, of Emmanuel, God with us. His dying was the dying of the Son of God for our salvation. His blood shed is the blood of God shed for your salvation. And then his rising again is the rising of God, who is man, who did not leave your humanity to rot in the grave, but raised it up even as he will raise up me and you and all the dead and give eternal life to all believers in Christ Jesus on the day he comes again in glory. Now he sustains us with his word by which the universe was made and by which he makes you new again in him. You are baptized or washed in his word, in his name. 
and you are therefore in Christ Jesus a new creation. The old is gone, behold, the new has come. At the table of the Lord, we receive the body and the blood that Christ took upon himself when he was conceived and born of the Virgin Mary, the body and the blood he took with him to Calvary's cross and gave in death for your salvation. He did not leave his body and his blood behind, but was raised up again in the flesh and now is seated at the right hand of the Father. And until he comes again in glory, he continues giving us his body and his blood in bread and wine for our life, forgiveness, and salvation. Finally, on the day he does come again, as we have said already, he will raise even you and me in the body, glorified in Christ to be with him forever. All of that hangs on this. Not only I believe in God the Father, the maker of heaven and earth, but also in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord and Savior. Let's say the second article of the Creed together. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Most people don't have a problem with Jesus being truly one of us, true man, truly human, with a body. At Christmas time, the world seems happy with a Savior who is in a manger, a cuddly, cute little baby Jesus the world can rejoice in. To confess this infant born of Mary as true God, this infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, as the eternal Son of the Father come to save us, well, that's a little more difficult, and many will not go there with us. In the early church, that was one of the questions that Christians wrestled with. Is this child, is this man, Jesus? Hello? Okay. If only Eve had have had a cell phone to call Adam when she needed. It turned out to be just a harmless eastern garter snake, which I safely removed from the playground. Kids went on playing, and the snake went on scurrying and slithering through leaves, I suppose. The form in which Satan confronted Eve in the beginning, of course, was hardly so harmless, but his bite wasn't venomous per se, but his doctrine was, and that dragged Eve and Adam and all of us into sin. And so that's when God made his promise that the seed of the woman would crush the serpent's head even as his own heel was being bruised. We left off before the emergency dealing with the question that the early church did. Is this child born of Mary? Is this young man who grew up in Mary and Joseph's household learning carpentry, perhaps as a trade, from his foster father? 
is this Jesus who is teaching and healing, casting out demons, who finally dies on the cross, truly God, eternal God, begotten of his Father from eternity, and also true man? That's the question that the early church wrestled with. And, of course, the answer is a resounding yes, he is true man and true God. Several hundred years after Jesus, the church came to a point of needing to answer that question from God's word, finally and surely. There were those, after all, who said, no, Jesus is a man, but he isn't true God. Why would God be born? Why would God allow himself to be betrayed and mistreated and finally nailed to a cross and die? Why would God allow himself to be placed into a grave? The early church in the fourth century answered the question with the Nicene Creed. We're not studying the Nicene Creed, but you know it from Sunday mornings. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. Such language is important. There is an eternal relationship between the Father and the Son. The Father is the Father, the Son is the Son. So he is eternally begotten of his Father. That's far too complicated for us to get into. But understand that we confess that there was never, ever a time when the Father was without the Son or the Son without the Father, or Father and Son without the Holy Spirit. Remember what we said at the beginning. Our God is triune. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three eternal and divine persons in one divine being. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. That's well beyond our capacity to grasp. But our triune God has revealed himself within his word, and so we take him at his word. By the word of God, the universe was made, you were made, and by that word becoming flesh, you and I have been made new again, namely in Christ Jesus. Even before he was born, he was named Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. That's what Jesus means. He, the Lord, saves. We call him Christ, not because that's his last name, Jesus Christ, son of Mary and Joseph Christ from Nazareth. <laughs> no, Christ is a title, the Christ. It's the Greek version of Messiah, or the Messiah. The Christ and the Messiah simply mean the Anointed One. And Jesus is God's Anointed Son, baptized with the baptism of John, in which he received the Holy Spirit, that he might be the Lamb of God to take away the sins of all the world including yours. The death he died was a real death in the flesh, the death of a man. The death he died was also the death of the Son of God. God died for you on the cross. When we speak of Jesus, we speak of his two natures, true God and true man. We'll take this up more in our next video. But for now, let's conclude with the explanation to the first article of the Creed. 
I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true.